Hello, and welcome to the Marlboro Public Schools Superintendent Corner. I'm Mary Murphy, the Superintendent of the Marlboro Public Schools, and welcome to Episode 9. Joining me today is Dr. Skazer. Hello, everybody. Assistant Superintendent, I didn't add that, and Assistant Superintendent O'Brien. Nice to see you again. And our special guest this episode is Mr. Ron Sanborn, who is the Director of Elementary Curriculum and Instruction. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Oh. Like you had a choice. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ron, will you tell us a little bit about your history in Marlboro, uh, when you started, and what you've done, done since you came to Marlboro? Sure. Um, so, um, I had done a little bit of research on myself prior to coming here today. So, this is my eighth year um, in the Marlboro Public School District. Um, I started in 1516. Um, and at that time, I was hired to be the principal of the Jarrick Elementary School um, and enjoyed doing so for seven of those years. And this year is my first year as director of elementary curriculum instruction um, for the school system. Great. And your final year as principal of the Jarwick Elementary ended with uh, quite a bang and an award yeah. too, yes. yep. correct? Yes. Um, I appreciate you bringing that up. So uh, last year, I was the recipient of the Thomas C. Passios Elementary Principal of the Year um, for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Um, and that is an award that, although I was very humble and gracious to receive, is one that certainly is encompassing of all the work um, that my staff had done along with myself uh, for the students and families at, at JARIC. Um, and also gave me an opportunity to celebrate um, all the great work that we're doing here in Marlboro, not only at the state level when I received the award um, at the State Association Summer Institute in uh, this past July, but also had the opportunity to go to um, DC um, at is what is known as a, a National Distinguished Principal and be able to speak um, on that stage to the work that we do here in Marlboro, which was, which was very exciting. That's great. That's awesome. Um, Thank you. So one of the things that we've been highlighting all year long is the fact that we're hoping that when people join Marlboro Public Schools, they find their forever home mm -hmm. and that it is a place that we can all grow. Mm -hmm. um, we also have embraced the fact that um, along the way, we pick up different positions, mm -hmm. and this is a new position yep. for you. Um, about ooh, five years ago, you and I co-chaired a strategy for improvement, mm -hmm. and one of the resources that we asked for was the director of elementary curriculum and instruction. Mm -hmm. So um, we are very grateful that that position was funded and yes. that you yes. um, were doing it. You've been doing that work for a couple of years, though, as a principal, or trying to well, support right. or lead that. Well, right, to the best I possibly that. could as, yes. as, as a principal. Um, and to the first two points that you had made, Mary, in, in regards to um, Marlboro um, being a place in, in, in home. Um, I've been in education for 24 years. Um, and in that time, I had been in seven districts. However, of all those districts, Marlboro has been a special place that I have feel that I have found my home in, um, having been here now for eight years, which is a third of my career. Um, and I say that with pride, uh, because it is, it is a unique place that has so much to offer not only myself professionally, but also the work that we do as colleagues. Um, and to your point, yes, when we, under Superintendent Bergeron, when he was really trying to find out what our um, plan would be to move forward um, and, and, and the, the work that we were going to do as a district, one of the priorities in the strategies for improvement was curriculum. Um, and we have a student population where um, one can consider it to be extremely transient, where students not only move within the school district, sometimes more than once in a school year, or over their career in Marlboro, but we also have students that move in and out and, out and often. And so our goal as part of curriculum was to ensure that we were creating those common experiences for students. And so we had found through the strategies of improvement that those common experiences and, and those um, belief systems at the secondary level were, were far more prominent in having um, supervisors at content areas and so on and so forth. And so what was interesting and, and exciting out of the work that we had done was 
one of the outcomes of the curriculum strategies for improvement, specifically at the elementary level, was to have someone to oversee those common experiences. Um, and Superintendent Bergeron spoke a lot about one message, one elementary. And so we worked really hard to, to create a plan that would have an outcome, or one of the outcomes would be to have someone to oversee the work that was happening over the course of um, the years at each of the elementary schools, which um, an intended outcome, and now as you see me sitting here, um, had come to, to light that we have a director who can oversee all of the work that's happening at the elementary, pre-K through five. Um, and one of my major roles and responsibilities in this position is to be the conduit to consistency amongst the buildings. Um, and so it's exciting to see that the district um, is moving in that direction in supporting the work that we do at the elementary level as well. I want to um, just note, um, I think I've shared with everyone at this table, but I don't think I've ever really talked about it much publicly, was that when Superintendent Bergeron um, had his entry plan, one of his findings was that there wasn't that consistency. And so it's been a real focus through the strategies for improvement in all of our work over mm -hmm. the last few years. And um, to give credit to the work that um, even Dr. Skazer, when he was an elementary principal mm -hmm. as well, when both of you were colleagues, um, that not one single teacher expressed that as a concern during my entry findings this year. And um, I know that we all see evidence of how that work's continued, how you're able to bring it to the next level and um, the teachers feel supported mm -hmm. and know um, that the district is focusing on this. So can you talk a little bit about some of the things you do on a weekly basis? Sure, sure. So um, part of the, the work in this role, having been, as, as you had mentioned, Dr. Skaza can attest to, as well as yourself, that it, it's, it's really hard to do the job not only as a building administrator, but also as a teacher. And so part of the work that I do is to bring information or remind them of information so that they don't have to look for it or search for it, that it's at their fingertips. So for example, one of the things that I do on a weekly basis is I send out what I refer to as a curriculum update. And that curriculum update really highlights the, the focus in the areas that we're working on, not only as a district, but also to keep them mindful of things that they need to do within their building or within the scope of assessments or timelines or um, presentations of student work, et cetera. So the expectation is that I have it done every Friday. It goes into each of the elementary principal's uh, weekly or weekend communication that we refer to as the read. Um, and then it's the responsibility of the teacher to, to look at that. And for that particular um, component, folks have been pretty positive and appreciate the fact that we are, we're doing some pre-work for them to have that information at their fingertips. What's also great about the curriculum update is not only that it's electronic, but it's a rolling document, which means that it just builds on itself every week. So let's say that someone forgot something or someone didn't get a chance to look at it. It's available for them to scroll through. So all the information I hope that they need is, is at a one-stop shop. It has articles, it has timelines, it has screencasts, it has um, shout outs. It has a lot of information for them to, at a glance, be able to see where they're at, what they need to do to move forward. Um, another thing that we're working on um, is that each month, twice a month, by bi-weekly, I go into the schools and, and uh, work with the building administrators um, to do what's known as an instructional round. And what we do, and the, the role of the administration is when I come, they, we talk briefly about what it is that they want us to look at together. Um, we, they select a grade level and we go out and we do our observations. And then we come back and we calibrate what we saw. Um, and a lot of times, most times, we're, we're seeing some really, really good things happening. And so how do we share that information with teachers? And, and how do we take what we've seen and we strengthen for the next time that we see or, or, or to increase student achievement? And those uh, rounds have been very positive too. Principals like to have a sounding board or someone to talk with. Their assistant principals as well as their educational team leaders are also involved, which they both appreciate um, in each of the buildings so that, that we, we make the priority to do it as a team. So it also helps to calibrate the district leaders within the building so that they're, we're all on the same page as what we're looking for and, and, and steps um, that we can strengthen you know, the work that we're doing together. And those walkthroughs that you're doing at the four elementary schools, you added the Early Childhood Center yes. as, as well, which is, is definitely uh, a new support for them yep. to be able to look at curriculum. Um, you, could you talk a little bit about that, like pre-K and K and how sure. they're connected? Sure. So uh, I 
very much um, feel that pre-K is included in the elementary scope um, and fought very and advocated very much so that they be like their sister schools, like everybody else. And so, although it does look a little bit different at, at the Early Childhood Center, um, it, it, it's a it, it's an exciting and welcomed opportunity. Um, I have the um, I, I'm fortunate to work with Director Burnaby um, and um, Miss Regan, who's the ETL there. Mm -hmm. um, and we do the same. We, we we focus on the same model that I do at the elementary schools at at, at the pre-K building as well. Um, and some really great things have happened from that. Um, you know, it's it's one of my favorite buildings to go into because the students are so friendly. They they just you're never a stranger to them. Whether they've met you multiple times or for the first time, they still want to come up and hug you, um, and they want to know why I don't have any here and and, and <laughs> what am I doing in their, their space. So it's always it's, it's pretty comical. But one of the what the greater outcomes has been that we really worked on. Uh, so far, trying to calibrate what the literacy instruction looks like at, at the pre-K level. So we're focusing on what we would call PK-1 students, pre-K-1. Those are the students that will immediately be going to um, kindergarten in the fall. Mm -hmm. And so what we were looking at is, is what would literacy look like in terms of not taking the individuality away from the teachers, um, understanding that purposeful play um, and, and the way that they integrate their thematic units is such a powerful piece to the early childhood center and, and early childhood education. However, we want to make sure that there are common experiences happening there as well. So in working with the director and, and, and the ETL, as well as with the lead teachers and, and, and the staff as a whole, we talked about what are our priorities? What are we going to look for when we see and we call what would be um, a literacy block at, at the pre-K level? So it includes some phonemic awareness. It includes uh, some phonics. It, can, it includes reading. And it and also includes movement. And so we've identified the particular resources that are available to all the teachers there that are supported and purchased by the district and how those could look like. And we've really mapped out what the time frames would be. And because the, the students are between four and five years old, time frame for all of those things to take place in each of those components are about mm -hmm. 10, 10 minutes each. Yeah. But now we've established what a literacy block would look like for a 15 minute portion of the day. We'll move into math. We've been talking about what, what um, unstructured time looks like or, or play. And, and then um, so we're, we're on the path to providing a, a program that is consistent no matter which of the rooms that your mm -hmm. child would be in. So it's, it's, it's been rewarding and exciting. Yep. Mary, uh, one thing that I just realized is that um, families in Marlboro might not know that we have the supervise at the six to twelve level yep. that we have academic supervisors that oversee the academics and the yep. scope and sequence. So, you know, what is taught and what uh, in what order, and then how deeply a topic is is do um, you know taught uh, that we had that six to twelve, and when I had gotten here six years ago that we didn't have that um, for pre-K to five. Right, so, yeah. so I don't know if, if um, yeah, I was thinking about that, that Marlboro uh, residents might not know that we had these systems in place for six to 12 for students to be able to have that alignment and that curriculum mapping, but we didn't have it. And that's why, to, that's why we needed Ron. To add that as well, when we look at the secondary level, I think many of us know um, from our own experiences or from our children's experience that once you um, are in the middle school, it's more content specific. Mm -hmm. So we have a supervisor of math or for the science and engineering or um, ELA and history and social studies. But at the elementary, we, we have Mr. Sanborn. Yeah. We have one. Yeah. It's kind of like the um, elementary teachers. Yeah. The, the, you know, they have to juggle it all. Mm -hmm. And now we're asking our super, you know, yeah. our director to juggle it all. Which is fine because I, I think the power mm -hmm. in the position allows us to establish what we refer to as that through line. Mm -hmm. So now we have a through line or a continuum from pre-K through five that can that could be established and show what is happening as they make that turn to the secondary level. Um, and so I have the opportunity to um, have a lot of conversations with my colleagues at the secondary level. And it's, it's amazing for them to hear all the work that we're doing at the elementary level. And it's not that they were ignorant to it, but frankly, they have their own roles and responsibilities, but there wasn't someone there to fill in those voids or to have those conversations mm -hmm. with them. 
And so it just further builds the capacity of what we're trying to do um, as a pre-K through 12 system. Um, and it's exciting because what we're doing they can build off on and I can also find out from them specifically what their needs are from us and so that we, we could um, make those transitions um, from pre-K to K, from the elementary to the secondary level as seamless as possible. And there's a through line with what is taught. What is the through line with how it's assessed? Can you talk to us about the calendar and what that information is used for? Sure, so what we try to do every year is to map out where and when we're supposed to, um, or we're asking folks to assess what students are able to do. Yes, we have the, um, the responsibility of doing the standardized assessments that the state has, asks for us, but that's not until the spring. So at three different points during the year, we have benchmark assessments, not only at the elementary level, but also at the secondary level. At the elementary level, we also have benchmark math assessments. And so what we do with these assessments is we gather that information, which is really a testament to us to see what's working, what's not, and how can we pivot and change. Mm. And so that, um, that is a document that, that's always available, that is, is thought about, um, and that folks have the opportunity to um, establish what their year is going to look like and plan things out in a, in a strategic way so that the hope and goal of having that Dr. Skyser is so that things don't creep up on folks, mm. but we're also able to take that data and say where we need to continue the momentum or where we might need to reinforce and support. And that assessment tool that the district uses isn't just a Marlboro, like something that Marlboro Public Schools developed. And as far as like what are what we feel the benchmarks should be, it's um, it's a national. Well, tool. the the tool itself we we create based on the the responsibility. So it really is is driven by what the state requires us to teach at every grade level within the frameworks. And so for us to break things down. We have certain core resources that, we've, that we use, that we've purchased as a district to best meet the needs of our students while also following the curriculum provided to us by the, or the frameworks that, that we are adhered to by the state. Um, so for example, when we do our progress monitoring assessments, we recommend how, how often in terms of frequency that happens mm -hmm. depending on the age of the students. Um, when we are doing our universal screeners each year, um, through NWEA, for example, we as a leadership team at both the elementary and the secondary level decide what, what makes the most sense because there's a, within our own calendar, there's, mm -hmm. there's certain parameters that some grade levels or, or some groups need to test before or after others, but we're always in concert with each other and understanding what our windows are so that we're not over assessing students, but we're also meeting the needs and the expectations and requirements that we're held to. And that NWEA is, that measures skills versus I think the other thing that you um, were talking about was like curriculum-based measurements, like where teachers will put together like a unit test, um, mm -hmm. which is measuring some of the content. Right. Um, so we have various formative assessment opportunities for students throughout the year for us as educators to take a dipstick to see where they're at. Um, so within our core programs, there are end of unit assessments or chapter tests, as if you will, um, that we use to, and we, we select certain questions from there to see how a student has done or a group of students do on a particular um, chapter or, or particular content. The NWEA, you're right, it's testing their skill set over time. So that particular assessment is showing us on a trajectory or a continuum that measures more like a ruler does, where are they on that continuum towards toward success? That tool will also give us projected growth. It'll also give us protect, uh, projected measures on other assessments like the MCAS or in the growth model as a student tests again from one fall testing window, let's say, to winter. Great, thank you. Um, so one of the things that we talked about, we've been talking about too um, throughout the year is that um, although technically you work closer with Dr. Skaza under um, teaching and learning, mm -hmm. you also may work with um, Mrs. O'Brien or other members of the leadership team, mm -hmm. for example, Mr. Um, Henry, mm -hmm. on um, identifying interventions or uh, what tools we have 
that will meet the needs of the students. So other strategies for areas of strate the strategies of improvement mm -hmm. that cross, so you're not isolated to one little hole yeah. that you're working on, yeah. that you work in partnership with multiple different people. Yes, um, and I'm glad that you brought that up, Superintendent Murphy, because it, I find that to be one of the um, most important pieces to this job is that I do get to work with a lot of folks um, at central office that have um, different interests and in, in everyone's um, skill set is different and helps us all work together as a team. Um, but in addition to um, Assistant Superintendent O'Brien, as, as you mentioned, we've worked closely on, on um, some things most recently at the Early Childhood Center. You're right, the Director of Technology um, Mr. Henry is someone that um, I've learned to um, enjoy and we're working very closely in um, attempting to align our tier one um, supports for our students and tier one being what all students should receive in terms of curriculum um, on a daily basis. And so again, as part of the strategies for improvement and enforcing, uh, not enforcing, and um, supporting those efforts and student achievement, we're, we're in the middle of a uh, challenge to decide what is the best opportunity for our teachers to have to support students. We are uh, discovering that we have um, several options um, that we feel that at this particular point, streamlining those options to what, as Mr. Henry would refer to, as a suite of, of technology um, um, options, apps, availability, and interventions for students might be in our best interest. And so we're looking at what is available, um, not only um, for us to purchase, but also what we're currently using now. And if, and we're kind of um, in the midst of um, an audit to see are each of the programs that we're using, are they the best fit for our students? Are they better fit for certain students and not all students? Um, and so our hopes um, very soon is to, well, we'll continue our conversations we've been meeting with, with Dr. Skaza, but, but planning on a roadmap moving forward as to how we could best suit and strengthen the supports that we have available for our students. So I'd like to also think about it. One of the things that we'll be talking about a lot to our parents and community members so that we have identified we want to have a consistent communication tool mm -hmm. from the teachers to the parents, mm -hmm. right? And so you learn about it in one grade level and it doesn't change every right. year. So to a certain extent, um, having some more consistent of those interventions mm -hmm. or other tools so if it, that if a student moves from one school to another, they'll know that right. that same intervention tools mm -hmm. being used at both schools, mm -hmm. right? So um, similar concept, not, not exactly the same, mm -hmm. but trying to be consistent, it will help the students and then yep. hopefully it will help the families. And Very true, Yeah. very true. Thanks. I think Dr. Skaza, uh, talking about the, the interventions, once students are identified based on those assessments, uh, you have Title I funding that you oversee mm -hmm. as far as collaborating with um, um, with Mr. Sanborn and and to be able to do um, you know some after school programs, some summer programs. So I know the two of you are busy coordinating some of that. Yeah, I, I rely on Ron um, heavily to help get those uh, ideas up and running and functional. So when you talk about after school programming, we just got some intervention offered to our grades three, four, and five students that's after school with uh, transportation available. Mm -hmm. And we have been working on the referrals to the Title I funded right. summer program as well. Um, and I know that you're working with a team uh, of interventionists as well when it comes mm -hmm. to intervention during the school day. Do you want to just briefly talk to us sure. about that team? Because I think sure. they're really the boots on the ground group. Abs absolutely. Um, they're, so each of the elementary schools has a reading teacher and a math interventionist. Um, and although they are, they, they're with Ford at each of those disciplines, one could say that they are um, dealing with different things, but because of the nature of their role, they very much work um, not only closely together, but also their responsibilities are shared and are very similar. So um, what I have tried to do um, 
this year so far is to have opportunities for them to find out some information and, and get some PD-like um, sessions within their content area as well as as a group. So um, Marlboro partners with several um, uh, companies. Um, some are data platforms, other are content um, specific. Um, and those two groups, the reading and math interventionists, they, they overlap a lot. And so they have to use those same platforms together. And we rely on them to support the teachers in the building. And we also appreciate what they're feeling, what they need, and what, what they tell us as to what's really working well and what might need some support. And so I provide opportunities for them to meet with these outside um, agencies as well as myself. And we've also included the instructional te technology specialists as well to almost be a cohort or PLC in and of themselves because they are the ones, as, as Dr. Skaza had mentioned, they are the boots on the ground. They're working to support um, not only the staff in each of their buildings, but also the students. They are the experts. And we do rely and appreciate um, we, on them and we look forward to their feedback. Um, the last time that we had met, you know, Mr. Henry, mentioned by uh, Superintendent Murphy, and I co-facilitated a meeting with them just on what interventions do you see, what are our needs as, as a district, and where do you see that we should, we should move forward. So that really um, spearheaded our conversations and our research and looking at what we currently have in place and what we might need to use differently so that we're, we're, we're trying to establish what's in the best interest of our students, but also understanding and appreciating those stakeholders and their opinions as well. Yeah. All right. So was there anything that we didn't ask you that we <laughs> should have asked you? Um, you didn't ask me if I'm having a good time. So I'm just going to tell you. Um, I do. I really enjoy this work and this role. Um, I, at one point in my career, thought that I could never leave being in a school or in a classroom with kids. Um, but I feel that the work that, that I'm doing in this position and the work that we're doing as a, as a district is, is so important um, and is making a difference. Uh, and I think that part of the reason that we are making such a difference is because we work so well together as a team. Um, we trust each other as people. We look forward to being in the same spaces as each other as, as professionals. And we have the opportunity to put the feelings at the door and ask the really tough questions to make sure that we're making the right decisions for kids. Um, and to be able to work in a team like that with the three of you and, and the other members of central office isn't something that or I can assure you happens in, in every district. Um, but we're not perfect, but we always aim to do better today than we did yesterday. Um, and that's really exciting because ultimately everyone in Marlboro is doing what they feel is in the best interest of kids. Um, and we always strive to do what's right and reflect on what we've done and to see if we need to make some changes moving forward. But I am loving being in, in all the schools. I'm very um, available for, for the principals and understanding what that role is and how v extremely challenging that can be. Um, so anything I can do to support them, to give them information, to give them data reports, to give them language so that they, they have one last thing to do um, as, a, as a building principal, that's what we're there to do. Um, and, and it's just, it's been a very rewarding position and one that I'm very fortunate that exists and that I'm able to play a part in the Marlboro Public Schools. So thanks. Great. Yeah. Thank you, and thank you for being with us no here problem. this thank episode. You. Um, thank you for joining us for this episode of the Superintendent's Corner, and see you next month. Thank you. Thank you.